Another challenge when deer are feeding on acorns, especially in mountain habitat, is that hunting conditions can be very tough where the acorns are present. I had a great opportunity to illustrate this recently when I took a time-lapse video of fog moving in and out of the valley behind my house. The video is a great illustration of how it can be very difficult to get close to a deer or set up for a deer to get close to you. I want to take a moment and explain thermals in more detail than we have in the past. Cold air sinks and hot air rises. Think of a hot air balloon. When they want to get higher, they're turning the heat to it. When they want to come back down, they turn the heat off, the air cools, and the balloon sinks back to the earth. Air masses, even those not contained in a hot air balloon, do the same. When the sun rises in the morning, starts heating up the land and the air, the air rises up the slopes. And when it cools during the late afternoon, it sinks back down just like water running downhill. Many research projects have showed that deer move primarily at dawn and dusk. I believe deer have adapted to moving during those time periods because that's when the thermals are most likely to be swirling. In mountain terrain, air temperatures or thermals can be more unstable than on flatland. When the sun comes over a mountain or a hill, it's gonna warm up a south-facing slope or a ridgetop much faster than a north-facing slope or a valley. In mixed topography, air is almost like it's in a blender. It's getting warmer here and still cool here and it's shifting around and it can't decide where to go up or downhill and in some places, it just circles. This constantly changing directions of airflow means deer are able to detect predators by scent from many directions. Strong and constant winds can certainly override thermals. And here at the Proving Grounds, we hunt the main valley when there's a strong north wind because cool air and a north wind almost always mean the scent is going down the valley. I've used this knowledge many times in the past to tag good bucks that are in areas that normally I couldn't even hunt because of swirling winds. One of my favorite hunts that I used that technique was when I tagged a buck we called the Trash Man. The Trash Man was hanging around a food plot in the valley we call Clay Hill. Clay Hill is at the bottom of a steep slope that has a bedding area on the slope and a creek in the very bottom. A few years ago, during a very cold morning, I slid into a ladder stand overlooking that plot, knowing that the cold air would continue going south several hours into the morning. After a few deer entered the plot, we spotted a large buck coming down along a travel corridor. As soon as he comes out in the open, you tell me you got him. It was the perfect technique to tag the trash man. Stop, buddy, stop. Uh. He's hit good. He's hit good. He's going down. Trash man is ours. Even in areas with minimal elevation change, thermals are still a factor. Cold air is like water and it's going to go down to the lowest spot through the path of least resistance. Warm air is the same. It's going to seek the path of least resistance to rise. In flatter areas, even though there doesn't seem much difference, you need to use caution in picking the exact placement of your stand or blind to make sure the thermals 
are not carrying your scent to where you expect to see deer. When the wind is calm and the humidity is high, humidity carries scent really well, it's probably better to scout and not be in your best hunting locations. It's not alerting deer once and coming home without feeling a tag that's the problem. I do that all the time. The problem is that deer have memory, at least until they become senile. And if you alert deer from a stand, it's likely they will avoid it for some time. 